Hello, uh, my name is Kirill Kirilgi. I'm a commercial real estate broker with Rolly Page Real Estate Services in Toronto. Welcome to my video blog dedicated to commercial real estate. Today, I would like to discuss some of the aspects associated with the CMHC uh, financing. CMHC is a Canadian mortgage and housing corporation that uh, ensures and provides uh, financing for certain types of the properties. And uh, my guest today will help me to uh, describe those properties and show me a couple of examples of how it's, uh, how it's done. So I would like to welcome uh, commercial mortgage broker, Daniela Piva. Thank you, Carol, for having me as a guest. I'm very honored. Uh, my name is Daniela Pieva, and I am a VP of uh, Commercial Mortgages in Mortgage Alliance Commercial Ontario. Um, I've been doing commercial mortgages and specialize in strictly in apartment building financing for about three years. Prior to that, I am um, a graduate lawyer that used to do banking law. Thank you, Daniela. I really appreciate you joining me. Uh, so <clears throat> let's just uh, start by um, maybe describing an, what is the uh, CMHC financing? What uh, does the uh, Canada Mortgage and Housing Corporation provide different from uh, conventional uh, financing? So uh, CMHC, it's a mortgage loan insurance product. Uh, CMHC on the commercial side is the only provider in Canada for mortgage loan insurances. Uh, for either construction, purchases, refinancing on small scale and large multi-unit residential properties. Uh, the smaller one that uh, they will start financing will be five units, so five units and up. CMHC offers both uh, funding opportunities with their own sources and uh, funds, and also acts as a mortgage loan insurance product to support the construction uh, purchases and refinancing. The rental properties that they support are uh, multi unit residential, affordable housing, um, retirement housing, student housing. They're the first, second mortgages, and party pass through mortgages. Okay. So, <clears throat> technically, the, uh, fr from a buyer's perspective, um, why uh, go with CMHC comparing to uh, conventional? Like, why don't they just, um, like, I, I know that there are fees in, involved. Uh, there is, uh, the process is a lengthier from what I hear. Um, you're uh, you're absolutely right. There is uh, there is a lot of uh, uh, misconception uh, on the market uh, that CMHC mortgage insurance product is very expensive. You're paying high premium. However, the benefits of having this product are tremendous. First, you get a preferred interest rate. This is typically uh, one percent lesser than the standard conventional pricing. For example, a conventional fund for apartment building as of today uh, will be close to three, three and a quarter, while CMHC, uh, having CMHC financing will provide you or give you access to funds that are below 2% mark. In my last year, I was quoted at 1.73% for a loan amount of 1.6 million, 30 years amortization, five year term. You cannot get that on the conventional side. So the biggest benefit would be uh, preferential interest rates. Um, also on the uh, CMHC insurance side, you can get up to 85% of uh, the value of the property, of the lending value. Of course, the lending value is different from the purchase price, but having an 85% uh, financing on a very stabilizing market value uh, property, it's, it's rich. It's, it's quite impossible to get it on the conventional side because they're usually restricted to um, 70 or 75 percent in some situations 65 depends which lender and conventional site you're using mm -hmm. to add to that benefit also is the big amortization period or the extended amortization period the borrowers are uh, are able to get when they have cmhc insured product the 30 years amortization period is available to most um, to most apartment building uh, properties. Uh, the only requirement would be that uh, the life expectancy of the building is over 30 years and you can qualify for the amortization of 30 years. There is 35 years available for property that 
are five years or um, or less uh, in terms of uh, being built uh, five years or less or recently renovated and four years amortization is available for brand new buildings. So that's a huge difference and makes a tremendous change on the net operating uh, income and debt service coverage when you receive um, when you're applying your analysis on the performa. Uh, getting a higher motivation period and a low interest rate really changes the cash flow for the borrower. So it's a great advantage. And in some situations, there might be a non-recourse consider if the loan to value is less than 65%. Again, that's very hard to get in the conventional side. And also personal guarantee can vary from 40% to 100%. So there's a lot of there's a lot of benefits to be added to it. And, uh, um, and in our recent crisis, a lot of borrowers uh, have been worrying about what would happen if the values of the property fall down and would the lender call the loan if we have extended mortgage. So if you have the CMHC product, you would never be worried about that uh, because your, pro your mortgage is insured, your loan is insured for the, uh, the entire term of 30 years. So it doesn't matter where the market is, you will be secured and the lender will not be able to call the loan. That's great. It's um, it's really a win-win situation, and uh, you ha you have to uh, come up with the less funds for the uh, down payment for the deposit, and you have a better cash flow. Of course, it should well, be. Uh, I don't want to put the misperception there that you really need uh, less money for the down payment. This is the case, though, for properties that have. Uh, market rents and their gross income uh, and complete revenue is based on the market rent. Um, this will be the, the scenario, but a lot of the apartment buildings, especially in the GTA area in Ontario, we see that the revenues are not really market revenues. Uh, they are uh, the, uh, the leases that uh, the tenants are paying are very outdated and they're paying um, uh, the, the revenues, it's, it's significantly uh, lower than what it would be if it's a market revenue. Um, so we don't determine the down payment based on the market value. I understand. Okay, but um, on the same on the same side, uh, from the CMHC perspective, uh, I have researched that like a couple couple of years ago on a certain uh, in a certain area, and the um, the I guess it was for the affordable uh, affordable housing, the rents that the CMHC has on their table are usually lower than the market uh, market rate. So. I, I would agree with you that if you were to submit a file to CMHC, let them drive uh, the show and let them determine the actual market rates or uh, you don't correspond with them and explain to them why your property is different, your loan can be significantly kept back. So this is the onus on the people or in, in, in the process who is submitting your application. Um, to, get, to put it into perspective, if you're submitting an application, your rents are extremely higher than what the market rents are, and you have no explanation, the CMHC will cut them back right away. And if your reply is okay, that's where it ends. Okay. However, if you submit to CMHC and explain, okay, the reason why my market rents are because of ABC, and here's your supporting documents, similarly building down the road. These are achievable rents, and here is a report from my realtor who can support these rents in the current market. They wouldn't even come back with asking questions. Rather, they will accept your uh, market uh, uh, um, tenancy agreements and uh, will apply these revenues to the actual revenues, and they won't question it. So it really depends on how you're submitting it and what justification you're, you're giving to a CMHC. Great. So let's, I guess, let's talk about uh, the process more. Uh, let's say I want to buy a building and what do I start with? Um, uh, do I get the, all the paperwork in order? Do I need to uh, hire an appraisal or is, is that going to be the CMHC who's going to be giving me a list of the appraisals who work in this area? How does it work? Um, Okay, so CMHC does not work directly with borrowers. CMHC only works with lenders and few CMHC approved brokers. There's only 
five that I, I know of uh, in, uh, in, uh, across Canada. So uh, the options for you to get that product is going directly to the lenders that support CMHC financing or going to CMHC corresponding mortgage broker. Uh, the process usually is uh, the broker or the lender will collect your entire information, including detailed rental, detailed expense statements, the bills for the last 12 months. If the property is five or six units, you do need an appraisal. But if the property is over seven, seven or more units, you do not need an appraisal. You need environmental in every single case. Um, you have to uh, provide the actual cost, the current, uh, uh, the current uh, rental, and in some situations they might ask for the leases. Uh, if you have a commercial component, the commercial component cannot exceed 30% of the actual building or you're not going to qualify. Uh, but if you do have a commercial component, the commercial component of residential income are separately underwritten and then joined together, so you have to provide uh, the actual leases for every commercial tenant. Uh, once the entire information is collected, uh, the lender or the broker will apply directly to CMHC and pay an application fee of $150 per unit. And then CMHC picks up the file, it uh, allocates a case number, and in today's market, it takes two to three weeks. To, for CMHC to provide the COI. This, the reason why they're so quick is A, the inspections that they usually do is no longer happening. They're not sending inspectors on the physical property and B, they have really hired and stepped up sometime in November, a lot of people and, um, and really helping the market in this difficult time. So the timing has tremendously improved for the CMHC application. So in the three weeks when uh, an analysis picks up the file, he can cut back the loan, he can give you feedback, he can ask more questions, or he can simply recommend for issuance of a certificate of insurance. Um, everything is gonna depend on the way you represent the file and how you have justified your numbers. So it's very important to trust the person that you're working with uh, that will spend the time and will be on your side to, uh, to get you the maximum loan possible or to um, argue the, economic, the higher economic value. Once the COI is issued, then uh, if you have gone through the lender, the lender will uh, issue a, a, either the commitment letter or the LOI, and then we'll proceed with uh, uh, the lawyers to close the, the file. So how long uh, would you uh, recommend uh, me as a broker uh, to put a due diligence or a financing condition for, uh, for the loan? What, uh, how long should it be? So I always recommend that the borrowers get at least two months, which, uh, which is eight weeks for due diligence in the financing aspect. And uh, whether the, the eight weeks will be sufficient to close the deal, um, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's in the air. I don't know. It really depends who the lender is and, and who the lender most likely is working as a legal uh, company or legal advisor because that's where really the file slows down today because we don't have an appraisal for most cases or even if you do the appraisals are pretty quick. At least I find the appraisers are pretty, uh, pretty quick in, in this market. The environmental specialists, they're, they're quite uh, um, speedy. So it becomes of the lawyer. How quickly the lawyer on the lender side will be able to close that deal. So that's where the delays might happen. Okay. I see. Thank you very much. So uh, why people should use uh, CMHC? Um, I, I understand you have an example that uh, you can share. Uh, with the difference, with the life difference of uh, one case versus the other. And uh, if you can just elaborate on that. Yes, before we go to the example, I want to, because I forgot to mention the different criteria in how CMHC underwrites uh, the files. So usually CMHC will apply the actual cost for the property taxes, the utilities, the insurance, uh, if there's elevated costs. So these, these taxes are the actual costs and you have to provide 12 months bills in order to justify them. Above and beyond that, they have certain guidelines uh, 
uh, that uh, they apply and it's a benchmark of expenses where it's going to be uh, within a certain amount or certain amount uh, for particular properties. And just to make it easy for everyone, I will share the Ontario benchmarks um, as of January 2015. There is not a lot that has changed since uh, since that period of time. Carol, can you please confirm that you can see my screen? Yes, I can see your screen, yeah. Uh, okay, so if we look at for a second, uh, for five or six units, wooden brick structure, you see the repairs and maintenance that are recommended or the minimum repair and maintenance that have to be applied for CMHC will be 600 per unit. There is a lot of room here to maneuver in the sense that if I'm a lender, I want to be really a little bit more conservative. Or if I know that the property requires significant capex going forward, I won't apply 600. I have to apply 77, 750, 800. So there is a level of experience here that applies when you're doing that analysis. The salaries typically are 125 a unit. You can, in most cases, uh, apply that standard number. And then the management of the fee will be the 3% of the EGI. Where your, your experience really comes into question is when you're underwriting seven or more or bigger type of properties because the cash flow really changes and the NY really changes on, on the lender perspective and the CMHC perspective. When you apply uh, maintenance of 750 versus 900 or 1200. So lenders tend to be a little bit more conservative because they have investors to apply to and they have to stay either in the, the middle or a little bit on the right side with a little bit more expensive um, uh, on, the, on the benchmarks. So if you're applying, for example, as an investor 750 for maintenance and repair, and you think that that's gonna be a fair analysis, you have to really justify it why it's 750. All oh, because I changed the roof. I have made a, a major capex on the windows and um, on the balconies on, um, on the boiler. Okay, that makes sense. But this has to go in the analysis. You have to prove it if you're using the, the, the lower spectrum of the scale on the maintenance or, or any of the operating expenses. There is a big difference between are we analyzing and we are underwriting for wooden brick structure versus concrete. A lot of people, for a lot of people, this is a surprise. But for us, it's, it's, it's really the norm. Concrete structure is very durable, but if something uh, breaks, it's very costly to, uh, to actually maintain. So if you can see the concrete structure, the salary jump to 400, the maintenance increases with $100 as a minimum benchmark per unit. So it's important to know uh, the, the benchmarks for CMHC operating uh, expenses as well as knowing the, um, where to go and where to check what vacancy CMHC you're going to use. Because a lot, a lot of brokers I've seen, they apply different vacancies and I don't really, I'm, I'm not sure where they're getting that zero vacancy for a property. There's no such thing as zero vacancy. Even if the market has a sustainable track record of two or three years with 0.1% with vacancy, CMHC will stick between two and three. So you have to apply these uh, uh, um, you know, um, important analysis in your performa. So to go back to your question, why uh, the client should be paying the premium and what is the difference in terms of cost between conventional and CMHC, I will share the, the example that I have prepared for you. <clears throat> Are you able to see the other Yes, screen? I can see. <laughs> okay, great. Okay. So, here I have taken an analysis for a 33, uh, a 32 unit property. I just picked an area, let's say Oakville, and I have applied um, uh, the, a projected rent. Let's say the annual projected rent for 32 units is um, 554,891,000. I've applied auxiliary income as parking and laundry. I've uh, uh, supported 3% uh, vacancy for the property and have gotten to gross income. Uh, here, the property taxes, utilities, insurance are the, uh, the actual cost of the building, and the rest have been underwritten in somewhere mid range of the general expenses. So it can stay consistent. 
there's not much difference in the way you underwrite a conventional lender or CBC lender. The costs for the writing are similar. The only difference that they could be is that the actual contract for, sorry, I have uh, provided here for two management fees that, that has to be a special reserve. My bad, it's, it's, it has been a long day. Um, the only difference, as I mentioned, will be, let's say you have a management contract and you're not at 4%. You're at six percent, so the conventional lender will actually apply, apply the six percent management fee contract. That is the one difference that I can think of right now between conventional FMT and the writing for the standard operating um, expenses. So on the and this is the conventional analysis. On the conventional analysis, we have to apply amortization for twenty five years because that's the maximum. The mm -hmm. current interest rate is around three to three and a quarter. Yep. I've, I've taken it a little bit of the conservative way of 3.29. So the maximum loan amount for about 1.2 debt service coverage, because some conventional lenders will accept 1.2, others will accept 1.3. Let's stay in the middle. It's around 4.8 million. On the CMHC, the performance changes drastically because, as you can see, the net operating income is it's the same. It's 354507, 354.507. However, when you apply 30 years of amortization and you do apply uh, about a percent 1.09 interest rate lower, because if I'm closing this deal today, it's probably even lower than 2%, but let's give a little bit of buffer, 30 basis points, the loan amount increases with 1.1 million that the borrower can take on the, on the financing. So you're increasing your loan amount by 1.1 million. That means you are actually taking away from the property a higher, a higher loan amount. So that's a very, um, that, that is very uh, com a compelling reason for a lot of borrowers to prefer the CMHC rules. First, because they get more money upfront. And also, if you look, if you take a look at the cash flow after the debt service coverage, mm -hmm. on the CMHC side, you get a, a cash flow of 82,464, uh, while on the conventional side is less than that, 73,000. So not only are you getting more money every single month in the cash flow, you're also getting 1.1 million more um, on the refinance and the purchase. What is the cost? That's the big question. So I have done an analysis with adding uh, the cost for the interest paid for the conventional and CMHC for five years and then 10 years. Mm -hmm. So all the numbers are identical at, at uh, uh, what I just uh, showed in terms of the performance. On the conventional side, you're getting 4.8. On the CMHC, you're getting 5.9. 20 years, uh, 25 years versus, uh, this should be 30 years, to worry about that. That's 30 years amortization, five year term for both. With conventional, you have the cost of appraisal, environmental, usually lender fee for the most part. On the CMHC, if you work with a broker, you waive the lender fees. They might be there, they might not be. I have eliminated them just for the sake of the, the example. You have a good and condition report on the convention side. You don't have that with CMHC because CMHC does your own analysis. But you do have the application fee of 4,000, or in mm -hmm. this situation, 4,800, which is 150 per unit. And also, I have added a premium for below 75% loan to value at 2.5%. So every time you increase the value, your premium increases. But for this example, we'll stick with under 75% loan. That that's adapts to the, uh, adds up to the uh, overall mortgage uh, amount. Yes. So the premium is added to the mortgage. So you're gonna get 5.9 uh, plus, mm -hmm. you're gonna be added uh, 147,500 for the premium on top of it. So the building pays for the premium. You don't pay anything up front. Yeah. So it's, it's great. Um, the interest for five years on the conventional side as the interest is, is quite higher. It's 769,460, while the interest paid for five years on the CMHC is 635,000. The overall cost is about the same yep. for five years. However, you get to pocket more money on that monthly and you get 1.1 million more in your pocket. Why wouldn't you go with CMHC? The premium, when you add it, yeah, I just don't understand a lot of people, I guess. Um, I mean, the, the premium added, it's paid with the building. You still have the benefit of, of the cash flow. 
So I have done just just for the sake, uh, the interest paid for six to 10 years. So the interest paid for six to 10 years uh, on the conventional side, if you're doing a 10 year term will be 750. Uh, on the CMHC, your cost of borrowing drops with about 200,000 if you're doing a 10 year term. No, it's amazing. It's really uh, like it's showing right there. Basically, it's, it's a great example. and. Uh, Daniela, thank you very much. This is uh, really amazing. And uh, like after that, like I don't know why. Why go with the conventional mortgage? <laughs> <laughs> was it was it convincing? No, yeah. but but there is a reason why uh, a lot of the REITs and uh, uh, most borrowers, when they have a stabilized property, they go to the CMHC zero without even thinking twice. I understand borrowers not going to see me zero when your property is not stabilized, when the rents are very low, when you are going to major uh, capex expenses for you renovating, you're bringing the expenses down. I get it. At that point, you probably need a bridge financing just to support this year, two, three years of changing the property. But as soon as your property is stabilized, there's no better option. And I understand that CMHC also finances uh, construction of uh, new housing. Um, it has to be affordable housing? Uh, okay, so CMHC have few construction program. They have the affordable housing construction program and they have the standard, uh, standard programs for, um, for the standard rental housing or uh, student housing. So the way the affordable housing program uh, works is the government provided $2 billion for uh, uh, funding that opportunity. So CMHC does not really act as a insurance uh, provider, but they act as a, as a lender. They lend their own money, the government money for the affordable housing program. That program is available to uh, support the cost of construction up to 100% financing on loan to cost for projects that are approved. In order to get your project approved, the two main uh, qualifiers are that the property has to be within um, a very close proximity of public transportation and in an area where the vacancy is below 2%, so very desirable area. It is, it is uh, on case-by-case -case basis, so uh, they, the CMHC um, will take the application, will uh, underwrite it, and you'll be competing not only with the projects in the area you're submitting, but entire Canada in order to get that finance. It's quite tough to get the financing, but not impossible. We have worked in a few files that, that we have um, uh, applied and been uh, successful with submitting for 95 to 100% financing. Um, as long as you understand how it works, and you, you also um, get uh, to uh, uh, understand the fact that it's not an easy program. It will take time, uh, at least eight months, uh, in order to get approved. And uh, you add all the affordability component in the loss of uh, income, um, and you're okay with the entire process. It's an amazing program if you can qualify because the rate. Uh, the rate right now will be close to nothing. Like if you can secure a product of, of the affordable CBC housing, um, you'll be looking at a little bit more of 1% on a construction for 10 years. Okay. And your premium is waived, so you don't actually pay any premium because of their own funds. So it's it's tremendously good program. Oh. Thank you, Daniela. It's like it, it's really eye-opening, and I, I understand that for a lot of investors, a lot of uh, buyers, that's going to be a um, good opportunity to uh, explore uh, while uh, looking for a, for a financing. And I understand that you, uh, your company, is one of the uh, registered with the CMHC. You're uh, fully, um, I would say, licensed to uh, to work with this program. Yes. Yes, we are one of the few brokerage in Canada. I am very uh, fortunate to uh, to work for, we've been nominated seven years in a row for the top uh, uh, commercial brokerage in, in, in Canada because of the relationship we have and the fact that we're sustainable. We've been in the market for over 15 years doing nothing but commercial mortgages. I don't even know how to spell residential. I've never done a residential deal in my life. 
So um, I'll need some help if I need uh, financing on my own home. Okay. So it, it is something that really, we really specialize in, and in me particularly on apartment building financing. Excellent. Daniel, thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate, uh, I don't know how to exp express my gratitude, but. <laughs> it was a pleasure, Carol. Always a pleasure to, to be your guest and to, uh, to have friends in the industry uh, as professional as you are. Thank you again. Uh, stay safe, stay healthy. All the best. Thank you.